Welcome back to the Astro Park, everyone. I wanted to create this video for the beginners that are getting started in deep space astrophotography. While doing your research, you may have come across a term known as integration time. Integration time is basically the total amount of time that you use to collect the data for your subject. Now, as I'm sure most of you are aware, deep space astrophotography is completely different from regular photography, such as taking photos of your family, your friends, and landscapes, for example. We can't simply point our telescope and camera towards our subject, click the shutter button, take a picture, and call it a night. Because that single image is going to be pretty faint. And this is due to the nature of deep space astrophotography. Because, as the name implies, we're working with objects that are out in deep space. So the light emitted from these objects have traveled through space for hundreds, thousands, and in some cases, millions of years before finally reaching us on Earth. So we need to take a long enough exposure to collect all of that faint light to reveal as much details as possible. So now you're probably thinking, okay, I can just open my shutter for say two hours, take my image and call it a night that way, right? Well, technically, yes, you could do that. However, that single two hour exposure is going to be pretty noisy. And on top of that, you'll have to deal with the various artifacts such as clouds that come into your frame, satellite streaks, and airplane streaks, for example. So in deep space astrophotography, the technique we use to create our images is what's known as stacking. So we take a short exposure, say somewhere between one to four minutes, we take several of those exposures and then stack them together in post-processing to create the final image. And when we create this stack, we're also boosting what we call the SNR, or signal to noise ratio. So while creating the stack, as you add more exposures, you're increasing the signal, in other words, the details of your subject while simultaneously decreasing the noise so you have a nice smooth image of your subject. So one thing that can affect your integration time is your telescope's focal ratio. You can use this formula right here to determine the focal ratio for your telescope given its aperture and focal length. And that number will determine the speed or light gathering capability of your telescope. So in general, telescopes that have a focal ratio between f1 to f4 are considered to be fast telescopes. So these telescopes have a short focal length, which gives them a wide field of view. So you're able to collect a lot of light in a short period of time. And telescopes that have a focal ratio between F5 to about F7 or F8 are considered to be medium speed telescopes. And finally, telescopes that have a focal ratio of F9 to F10 or larger are considered to be slow telescopes. So these telescopes have a long focal length, which gives them a narrow field of view. So you'll have to take a 
long enough exposure to collect as much light as possible. Now, another thing that can affect your integration time are the numerous anomalies that you will encounter throughout your astrophotography journey. Random clouds might just come out of nowhere and block your subject, even though the forecast called for clear skies. A piece of equipment might unexpectedly malfunction on your gear and you'll be forced to use precious imaging time to troubleshoot the issue. Even your location relative to your subject can affect your integration time. If your subject rises nice and high in the sky, you can collect a lot of data within a single night. However, if your subject is low on the horizon, then you'll have to use multiple nights to collect that same amount of data. So regardless of whatever obstacle you may encounter, it's my hope that you don't get discouraged by these obstacles. Because astrophotography is a pretty dynamic hobby as things are constantly changing in real time. So if things for whatever reason don't seem to go your way, try not to worry about it too much. It's like that saying where we tend to make these grand plans for our life and the universe looks at those plans and it basically says, serious it happens but for whatever reason you're not able to meet your integration time quota try not to worry about it you can always try again next time Tonight I'll be revisiting an object that I photographed for the first time four years ago. I'll be taking a second shot at Messier 8, or the Lagoon Nebula, in the constellation of Sagittarius at a distance of about 4,000 light years away from Earth. Here's my first image of the Lagoon Nebula that I took back in 2021. I was dealing with some clouds and wildfire smoke at the time, so I was only able to capture an integration time of 45 minutes. However, now in 2025, I've been working on this for the last three nights back in August, and I'm back tonight for night number four in mid-September. So I should have a lot of data this time around. And for this imaging session, I'll be using my Orion Eon 104 EDX2 triplet apochromatic refractor. And for imaging, I'll be using the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro. And this will be mounted on top of the Orion Atlas Pro AZ EQG. And to help minimize the light pollution as well as maintain the natural colors, I'll be using my Optolong L Quad Enhance broadband light pollution filter. All right, you know what time it is. Let's get to work.
Hey everyone, so M8 is now behind some trees, so I have to wrap things up for my imaging session. I was able to capture about 90 minutes worth of data, and putting that together with what I captured over the last three nights, I should hopefully have a much better image this time around. So I have to sort through all of the data to see which frames that I'll be able to stack. This was my first multi-night project that I've done so far, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the result that I'll be able to generate. But first, I need to take care of my calibration frames, and once I finish that, I can pack everything up and head back home. So, thank you for watching Astro Park. Please enjoy my hopefully improved image of the Lagoon Nebula at the end of this video. And as always, until next time, take care, and I wish you all clear skies.